Hey, hey, everybody, I'm Zombie Johnny, and today we're going to be taking a look at a second series by one of my favorite illustrators, Jeff Smith. This is Razzle. Razzle was written and illustrated by Jeff Smith and published by Cartoon Books. Razzle's original run was from 2008 to 2012. Six years ago, I covered one of my favorite comic book series, and that was Bone. If you haven't watched my review on Bone, then I'll just quickly say that I pretty much gushed over the comic book the whole review. So of course I was looking forward to another series from Jeff Smith. I knew about the existence of Razzle for some time now, but for some reason just never picked it up. Until one day, it randomly popped into my head. Almost like Razzle popping in and out of dimensions. But we'll get to that in a minute. The story of Razzle begins with a battered and beaten man stumbling through the desert. The next page flashes to that same man standing on the edge of a building during a rainstorm. He is breaking into an apartment to steal a priceless Picasso painting. Well, to some priceless, but for this man everything has its price. The man nabs the painting and spray paints his calling card on the wall where the painting was. Razzle. This is our main character, folks. His real name is Robert Joseph Johnson. I'm a little curious if his name is paying homage to the blues legend Robert Leroy Johnson, the same Robert Johnson who took himself to the crossroads and sold his soul to the devil. In the context of this book, I wouldn't doubt that both Roberts had sold their souls to the devil. But let's continue on with the story. As Razzle is about to escape, the man who owns the apartment notices Razzle and fires at him. Razzle jumps from the apartment building and flees into a dark alley. As the police are about to catch Razzle, he straps on some sort of contraption and then disappears into a ball of lightning. The device he had strapped on was an interdimensional jumper. When Razzle lands, he finds himself in an alternate reality where everything is almost identical to our world, yet things are just a little askew. As Razzle is coming down from the heist and the dimension jumping, he decides to have a drink at a dive bar and play some music on the jukebox. Just then, a very strange looking man comes into the bar and opens fire on him. Once again, Razzle is on the run. Razzle ends up clobbering the strange looking man and finding himself a quiet place to meditate. It appears that he can't jump back to his dimension until he comes down from the last jump, or as he calls it, drifting. Then the story shifts again, back to Razzle, bloodied and beaten, stumbling through the desert. In what might be the strangest way to start our adventure yet, this is where the adventure begins. I would say that the story of Razzle is fractured, almost messy in a way. It's not overly confusing, but it really takes you for a ride all over the map. It feels like there are large chunks of it missing. But this might be explained by Razzle having reoccurring blackouts due to his ever more frequent drifting. Though I felt like it was maybe jumping around in the wrong places. There is one section of the comic where Razzle is telling a story about a World War II vessel witnessing some sort of electrical anomaly. Then it jumps back to Razzle and he is duking it out with the frog face man and then a page later he's drinking in a bar continuing the story of the World War II vessel. Like nothing went wrong, nothing ever happened and he isn't being hunted. Maybe in the original comic book format it would have made a lot more sense because these pieces would have been broken up into smaller sections. But it being an all in one volume, all of it plays back to back and it seems a little confusing. There is also another point in the comic I was a little confused. I didn't know which universe Razzle was in and a disaster happens and a whole town is leveled. I originally thought that the town was leveled in a parallel universe, but it turns out that it was leveled in our universe. Though it does make sense because at times Razzle doesn't know what reality he is in either. Confusing for you, confusing for me, confusing for Razzle. Confusing for everyone! So now I'm going to move on to the approach that Jeff Smith had for the presentation and writing for this series. Smith's writing in this comic is very fast paced and exhilarating. The writing is tense. You feel like you should be looking over your own shoulder after reading Razzle. I know I had to look around the room for my children after reading this part. Okay, so this girl is a reoccurring character throughout the series and, well, just creepy. Anyway, I've read that Razzle was described as a noir, but I don't really get that feeling. To be honest, Razzle reminds me of Blade Runner. Of course, I had to know if Blade Runner was an influence to the series, and yes, of course it was. I also had to know if Blade Runner was considered a noir, but... It is important to note that, strictly speaking, that Blade Runner is not considered film noir, but it is influenced by the film noir styles of the 1940s and 50s. It would more appropriately fall into the category of neo-noir, which are basically noir influenced films from the 1960s onwards. Not like anyone really cares, but I guess technically Razzle would be considered a neo-noir. But that's only my opinion. Smith's art style feels more dark and gritty in comparison to Bone. And of course it would. 
Razzle is dark, action-packed, hard-hitting, and is also aimed for an older audience. Unlike Bone, where it is child-friendly, the characters are drawn in a little more realistic way. They still maintain Smith's style with his soft and smooth lines and exaggerated features, but instead they feel a little more human-like. The comic has some wonderful insight into Nikola Tesla's life and history. His inventions, his theories, and his experiments are showcased throughout this comic. But at times, it almost feels a little preachy. I'm not trying to discredit Nikola Tesla or any of his inventions. His inventions made the modern world what it is today, but I don't need to hear about Nikola Tesla every fourth page. To me, it felt almost like a Nikola Tesla worship book. Worship him! Worship him! I mean, each book starts with a quote from Tesla and his views on life and the universe. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. So the version of Razzle that I had purchased was the hardcover, full-color version. This is a beautiful presentation of this series. The coloring is fantastic. The page weight is perfect. There are no panels bleeding through the other side of the page. It isn't glossy, but in my eyes, it is a blessing because trying to take photos of glossy pages is very frustrating. Bonus points for matte finished pages. Overall, Razzled is an interesting thrill ride with plenty of twists and turns. In my opinion, it's worth having on the shelf. And if you're a Jeff Smith fan, this is a must in your collection. Total page count 476. Total volumes 1. Total score 4 out of 5. Thank you so much once again for watching. You know, today I wanted to cover Razzle because I know Jeff Smith's Bone is quite popular, but I feel like maybe some people wouldn't have ever heard of Razzle, so I wanted to cover it just so people could get exposure to it. And you know, that's kind of the purpose of the whole channel, is not just necessarily covering the newest and latest manga and comic books, it's kind of cover everything, maybe even in a person's bibliography. I know Jeff Smith has a new comic out, I can't remember exactly the name of it, but I believe it's like Neanderthal. Neanderthal based and um, yeah Razzle was one of the ones that I saw in the local comic book shop for quite some time and was like you know I should pick that up because I really enjoyed Bone and that's another reason why I covered it as well because I really love Jeff Smith and I mean to be able to buy these comic books in an all-in-one edition that I mean Bone isn't in full color but Razzle is and I believe I got this one on sale it was very cheap in comparison to buying you know four or five volumes of a set this this was on sale and it's all-in-one volume full color hardcover I mean you can't go wrong it's I think Razzle's once again one of those series that is definitely worth reading um, it's not <laughs> not exactly for everybody and the story can be a little bit wonky at times, but it's definitely something that uh, I think people who are fans of Jeff, Jeff Smith would enjoy. It kind of, he, he's kind of taken it in a completely different direction. Uh, it's more sci-fi and darker in comparison to something that's quite lighthearted and fantasy like Bone. But anyway, I'd like to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Things are going great. And it's the summertime. It's been quite rainy out lately, so I did have some time to do reviews and read comic books. So uh, once again, thank you. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and safe. I'm Zombie Johnny. Peace.